Hello YouTube, it is the last day of 2016 and I'm recording just one more video this year and since I've uh, statistically I've seen that uh, people spend less than one minute on my channel on each video uh, on average three minutes uh, actually but most people spend a lot less I just want to say to you Happy New Year and don't buy a Chromebook. Hello YouTube and welcome to yet another video. It is now the last day of 2016, 31st of December. Tonight is New Year's Eve and I'll be celebrating the end of a difficult year actually on a personal note but also looking forward to a new year full of possibilities and uh, I'm just gonna end the year with a short video <laughs> yeah right uh, about this the Asus C100P uh, this is a Chromebook it came out in spring 2016 so it's pretty old but it is also pretty interesting and one of the most important I thought at least uh, releases of 2016 and the reason for this is not the the actual computer that you see the reason is actually this was one of the three Chromebooks that received uh, Google Play and uh, I've always steered well clear of Chromebooks because generally speaking they are very low quality and you can't really do anything with them without uh, a good Wi-Fi connection and when I typically when I want to use a, a laptop uh, I'm on the move and Surprise, surprise, not all places in the world have good quality uh, internet connections readily available. So I often find myself completely offline. Uh, and in that case, a Chromebook is, is pretty, well, not absolutely useless, but it is kind of limited. Uh, so I never really wanted a Chromebook, but the fact is, these days you can get some pretty nice looking Chromebooks for a reasonable price and when Google said that they would make Android apps available on Chromebooks uh, the Google Play Store would be available and Android apps would be able to run natively on, on Chromebooks that became very interesting because that meant that you could buy a relatively cheap nice looking laptop that not only was working when you had good Wi-Fi but a lot of Android apps are made for not having a good connection so you could you know do a lot of stuff offline uh, in a better way and that's very interesting so I bought this in the summer I waited and I waited and I waited and uh, then eventually, finally, uh, this got upgraded, software upgrade, to uh, have uh, the Google Play Store enabled. And I'm going to talk a bit about that experience, and I'm also going to talk a bit about this particular computer, and finally, some stuff about Chromebooks in general. So... Um, the Asus C100P is a Chromebook, uh, as is apparent with the Chrome logo up here. Uh, it is what I like to think of as a third generation Chromebook. First generation Chromebooks were horrible little machines with plastic and cheap plastic and, and very poor build quality. Then Google released the Pixel, Google Pixel, the original. Pixel, which was a Chromebook, and that kind of showed that you could have a machine that was a 
cheapish Chromebook and still look nice. And of course, uh, late 2015 or early 2016, Google released Pixel 2, which is basically uh, an Ultrabook kind of computer with uh, really good specifications and that looked really, really nice and also cost a lot of money. And, and uh, a lot of, a lot of some uh, computer manufacturers kind of tagged along and released this year some very nice looking and quite powerful uh, Chromebooks. This is somewhere in between. This is a very nice looking Chromebook. It is thin, it is light and it's a pretty good size. Uh, if you go around it, you can see here that it is a power port over here. Now we have volume rockers, power on buttons, nothing on the front. Here we have here we have HDMI out, mini HDMI, two USB ports, micro SD card slot, headphone jack, nothing on the back. Uh, the body is made out of aluminium, so it's kind of cool to the touch. On the back here you can see stereo speakers and a rubberized feet so you can put it on a table without you know scratching it uh, on the front you got the asus logo and the chrome logo and of course this is one of asus flip machines so in addition to being a laptop and uh, as you can see it's got a very highly reflective screen, but it is a touch screen. That's I'm guessing why it's so reflective. Uh, you got a nice keyboard, not amazing key travel, but you know it's pretty good. And you got a touchpad, a mouse pad, and then you can also, of course, do the flip stuff. So you can have it in tent mode, or you can have it in uh, display mode or you can go full on tablet but this is a tablet like you know yoga books have tablet yoga laptops have tablet uh, in that you have the keyboard on the back side and it is a bit thick to be a tablet to be honest but you know for the price Three and a half thousand Swedish kroner, that's about 350 US dollars or 350 euros. It's nice, it looks nice. The inside here is also aluminium, I think. Uh, and the keyboard is okay. So you get a pretty good looking machine for that price. Inside, and now I'm turning to my cheat sheet. Inside we have a quad-core rock chip uh, processor. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure how quick it is. I think it's 1.4 or 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, we got four gigs of RAM in this version. They are available with two gigs of RAM as well. 10.1 inch uh, screen, touch screen, which is very, as is saw earlier very glossy it's hd only so it's 1280 by 800 pixels so the resolution is not great but you know it's pretty decent for for this size of machine uh, we have 16 gigs of internal storage in this you have the micro sd card slot you've got a web camera you got good wi-fi and bluetooth 4.1 support two cell battery which gives it pretty good battery life uh, it is i like to kind of divide things into either being laptops or being uh, uh, tablets and this kind of falls in the tablet criteria of being always there it's very quick to boot even if you turn it off it's very quick to boot and the battery life in standby is just amazing uh, so it will always be there for you
as I said earlier, I've always avoided uh, Chromebooks because uh, they were made to be used online in the cloud, in, in the Google cloud, to be more precise. And uh, when I travel, which I do a lot, uh, I often find myself without Wi-Fi. And um, I always thought that Chromebooks would be pretty useless without a Wi-Fi. So when I bought this in June, uh, the Google Play Store was not available yet. So I took it on a short trip to Germany, to Berlin, to just see how would a Chromebook work when you didn't have Wi-Fi available. And it turns out I was kind of right. <laughs> In all fairness, I, I, I hadn't used this for many days before I left. So I'm sure that a seasoned Chromebook user with a lot of you know, experience with using Chromebooks uh, would fare better than I did. But I downloaded some kind of uh, Chrome OS app for video playback and I put some videos on a micro SD card and I thought I would be able to watch that in flight but I couldn't because there was something wrong with the codec so I couldn't see it started fine the first couple of minutes and then it would just stop working uh, so that's a disappointment uh, and that's basically what my experience was uh, I couldn't I couldn't really do anything uh, with my Asus C100P until I got into Starbucks in Berlin uh, and suddenly I had Wi-Fi and suddenly I could do things and I ended up in the evening uh, going back to Sweden. I was in Berlin for, for one day which is a wonderful trip uh, and on my way back I actually got access to the lounge on the airport and I could you know watch streaming video and that worked very well uh, but it is in my opinion not very useful if you don't have uh, uh, Wi-Fi access and that's not really surprising because these machines were as I said built to be used in the clouds it's basically a Chrome web browser with a screen and a keyboard attached. Uh, that's all it is and it's all it's meant to be. It is geared towards students basically, people with no money basically, uh, access to, to uh, free Wi-Fi uh, which you typically get on campuses these days and also uh, who need to share their work collaboratively with uh, a lot of people. For those kinds of, of in those kinds of environments the Chromebook is perfect because you get out of the box everything you need to work uh, collaboratively with other people on the uh, on the cloud and and you know you also get a number of gigabytes storage on on Google's uh, cloud storage so it is great uh, the reason I bought this particular Chromebook was that it was the cheapest one out of the three that were going to get uh, Google Play uh, initially. And I can kind of see why Google just picked three, uh, three uh, Chromebooks and they picked their Pixel 2, obviously. Then they picked a kind of a mid-tier uh, thing, I believe it was from HP, and then they picked this one. And this was the cheapest version uh, of Chromebook, cheapest Chromebook with uh, Google Play on it. And it's three and a half thousand. And three and a half thousand Swedish kroner, you could easily buy a Windows laptop for that kind of money. And the question is, why would anyone buy a laptop, a Chromebook, for seven or even ten thousand Swedish kroner, that's seven hundred or a thousand US dollars, when that money would also buy you a comparatively, or actually, in my opinion, in many ways, superior Windows machine. Well, I think there's two reasons for that, and and first of all, 
these machines came out five years ago and they became very popular with students and if you've been to university or college or whatever and you've been using uh, a certain type of machine you kind of want to continue using that because you have you're invested in that kind of ecosystem and it, it you know it syncs very well with your android phones i'm sure i haven't really tried but i'm sure it's google so you can use your your google drive and your, your google office whatever uh, on all kinds of platforms so it kind of makes sense that as the students graduated they got jobs and they got more money and they started uh, you know looking for for upgrades to their clunky old chromebooks they might still want to buy a chromebook but they wanted a chromebook that has a lot better specs you know nicer screen better keyboard bigger that kind of thing and that's i believe why we're now seeing uh, Chromebooks with, with a lot better specs than originally came out. Uh, personally, I can't really see the point of, of buying a Chromebook. Even this Chromebook is stretching it. A Windows laptop with this uh, kind of price point would be pretty bad. Uh, but it's still, you know, for me, uh, being a Windows user, uh, I, I'd prefer Windows over Chrome OS, really. But I thought that it was interesting to buy this to see if Chrome OS with Android apps would actually be a decent replacement for a full laptop, either running Windows or, or Mac OS. And of course, Mac OS, you typically have to give a bit more money for, for the same kind of performance. So uh, that's why I bought it, and I believe also that's uh, why, why anyone would be interested in buying one of these things, unless you're a student or, or you know, being a student who is very used to Chrome OS. So when I finally got um, Google Play, uh, installed on my uh, Asus C100P, I was very disappointed. <laughs> it was really, really unstable and, and nothing really worked very well and, and you could only run things in windowed mode and you know, the screen is tiny so using windowed mode is just useless. It was however a, a very early uh, Build. I was on the the uh, you know the first what do you call the channels? Uh, Google Chrome OS has three channels, so you can get either the stable version or the beta version or the I'm crazy and, and I just want to try whatever is new version. And I was on that channel to get uh, the Play Store uh, as soon as possible. So. You know, uh, the first couple of versions really didn't work very well. Uh, but a couple of months ago, finally got the, the, uh, the stable version of this uh, Google Play, uh, which prompted me to switch back to that channel and kind of restart and, and try everything again. And I'm still disappointed. And the reason I'm disappointed, well, it's a lot more stable now. First of all, it is a lot more stable. Uh, and uh, most apps run okay. My favorite Android game, Sentinel 3, doesn't run. I'm guessing it's simply too old and they did some stuff that was um, maybe not completely kosher uh, in their implementation of the graphics because the graphics don't work. It might also be depending on the uh, chipset, graphic chipset in this. And so, so that was a disappointment. Other Android apps work. Uh, they are very slow though. Uh, that's why I said that it says 1.8 gigahertz on this, but it just feels like it is 
maybe 1.8 gigahertz is shared among the four cores i don't know but it's it's really really slow uh doing most things um but you know it works windowed mode is pretty pointless uh you got 1280 by 800 pixels on a 10 inch screen you pretty much want to run everything in in full screen anyway so it's not really helpful uh, you can get windowed mode and you can kind of stack windows on top of each other and stuff like that but it, it's not very useful i think uh, and the most prevailing impression that i have of of running android apps on this particular machine is that it is slow and you know i, I can easily compare that to this this is the lenovo yoga book which i did a, a very long review of uh, four weeks ago and it's actually a lot of people have been watching that and thank you very much for doing so it's really nice that people watch even my really long videos uh, I love this thing uh, and it, it's running pure Android with a bit of, of Lenovo magic on top and that works so well as a kind of desktop -y kind of laptop uh, environment that I sometimes forget that it is really only an Android tablet. It, it is, you know, it is slimmer, it is lighter, it is smaller, it is better looking than the ASUS. Uh, it is also 1500 Swedish kroner more expensive, about $150 more expensive, but it is money well spent because this is actually a much better experience than this. This just is too slow. And I think if you want to get Google Play Store and Android apps running smoothly and, and efficiently under uh, Chrome OS, you really need to step up from this basic models uh, to kind of the next level. And then you're basically at the very least in the same price range as the Nova Yoga book, possibly more. And, uh, you know, if you want really good performance you would go out and you would buy the pixel 2 which is you know 13 inch green and uh, i think believe you can get that with a core uh, intel core processor and that would be brilliant i'm sure that it will run very smoothly and you would have use of all the windows and stuff and uh, I, as i said earlier i can't see the point of doing that really because if you are going to spend that kind of money you might as well get a windows based ultrabook or a macbook air or, or even a macbook pro perhaps that would in my opinion give you a lot more uh, for the same kind of money because when it all comes down to it whatever you can do on chrome uh, books you can also do on windows machines because you have Chrome uh, web browser on a Windows machine as well. So all that, you know, online sharing stuff, you can do that on a Windows-based machine and you can do all the other stuff on a, on a Windows or Mac OS X-based machine. So the benefit of actually buying a Chromebook is, I, I can't really see it. Uh, it's possible that if you are really 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 into chrome os uh, that you think it's worth just staying in that kind of environment instead of switching to mac os x or, or windows but you'd have to be a real google fanboy to <laughs> to do that i think uh, it seems pointless and it seems even more pointless when you can get the Lenovo Yoga Book, uh, which runs Android, all the Android apps runs very good on, on this, this thing. Uh, yes, 
the Lenovo Yoga Book has a virtual keyboard, but to be fair, I don't think the ASUS keyboard is that much better. Uh, it's actually smaller, it's more cramped. The keys are smaller because they are uh, island style keys. The key travel is, there is a key travel, but it is very small. And in general, it's not a very good typing experience. And as I said in my Lenovo Yoga Book review, uh, the Lenovo Yoga Book typing experience is surprisingly good. Don't buy the ASUS uh, Chromebook, uh, even with the uh, Google Play Store, uh, or actually Google Play Store and Android apps don't really add any value to it because it runs so slow, it, it's really hard to use. Uh, if you want a Chromebook with Android apps on it, you have to step up and buy a more expensive machine. And if you do that, I think you are slightly crazy. Uh, of course, it's your choice. You can do whatever you want. I would never do that. I think even this at three and a half thousand Swedish kroner is too much really to give for, for a Chromebook. Uh, and I don't believe that you will see uh, any Chromebooks at this prime po price point or lower price point that would have uh, any any relevant performance or, or performance enough to to run uh, Google Play. I would much rather, or as I did, I I, I bought a Lenovo Yoga Book. I use a Lenovo Yoga Book. Uh, I've never used this. I, I tried to use it for a while when I started using the the Google Play and trying out Android apps. Uh, I didn't like it. I don't like Chrome OS. <laughs> um, you know, it's a personal opinion, so you, your your opinion might differ, and that's okay. But I don't look like Chrome OS, and and this didn't do anything to change my uh, general view of of uh, Chromebooks. Uh, I don't think I will ever buy another Chromebook. And um, in my opinion, neither should you, uh, because these days you can buy uh, decent laptops running other operating systems for about the same price. Uh, and if you really, 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 really need to go cheaper, you could probably get uh, secondhand units. And that's kind of an important point here. Uh, Chromebooks were based on netbooks and netbooks came out 10 years ago and 10 years ago uh, We had a very different laptop market Now the laptop market has evolved prices has come down performance has come up and You can get really good machines that are a couple of years old that still performs very well because we haven't really seen that much development uh, in in the uh, Intel-based uh, processors these past couple of years. You get you know every generation, every year you get slightly better uh, battery performance or, or slightly better graphics performance or uh, something like that. But for this kind of price bracket here. Having a machine that's two or three years old is pretty much, you know, it's still better than, than this. So I would go for that. Uh, I can't really see the point of, of Chromebooks anymore. They had, a, uh, they had a market gap to fill back in uh, 2010, 2011 when they came out. But now I don't see that market gap anymore. And I'm guessing that's why Google are trying to uh, increase their usability and attractiveness by adding a Google Play and also by uh, releasing these high-spec machines. Uh, but to me, 
that's just no point. So do spend your money on something else in the new year and uh, have a very happy 2017 and I hope to see you sometime in the future.